So did you know that Julia Child has a bagel recipe? Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another week. Please pull up a seat, get comfortable, because it is my kitchen, it is your kitchen for the next little bit, and we got stuff to do. We're in Baking with Julia, the cookbook. We haven't done anything out of this one yet. And there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. And this bagel recipe has intrigued me uh, because I always have bagels on the mind when I'm living in New York. It's just like everywhere you look, there's bagels, there's bagels. It's just got a very strong bagel scene in the city. I even picked up a few to emphasize my point. There's some New York City bagels right there. This is why I picked them up, just so I could do this into this. But also I'm gonna compare and contrast with my bagels later on. Like croissants, bagels have transcended their origins to become all American. That's what it says in the book. That's what it says there. These are chubby bagels, boiled then baked with a cakey open sponge. They are not heavy, stretchy, or chewy. And for a color photograph, turn to page 78. That thing is beautiful. That's what we're after. And of course you can top it with whatever you please. I'm sure you've heard me say the word bagel enough right now to form an opinion about how I say it. Everyone tells me I say it funny. Even my uh, dear to me wife, Christy, says, why do you say it that way? But in my head, I don't know that I'm saying it any differently than anyone else. Bagel, 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 bagel. I can't, I've been practicing too, and I'm just like, okay, well, wh however I say it is however I'm gonna say it in this video. So I just wanted you to be aware of the situation. Let's get to work. Okay, well, I was just thinking of something here. I had an idea since the last time you saw me, which was the previous shot, uh, because I was reading the recipe again, and Julia has me mixing the dough either by hand or by machine like the silver fox. And I was gonna go the machine route, and then I was like, you know what, wait, stop. Let's split the ingredients in half and do one of each, hand, machine. I'm just thinking of the people that don't have a silver fox, they want to have their bagels and eat them too. They can, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start this off with a cup one and one eighth cup of lukewarm water. Pour that one eighth cup into something else. And I have yeast, active dry yeast. If you have it in my pantry, I had some instant stuff, so I wanna use this. And I know I don't have to follow these steps if I'm using the instant stuff. I could probably just add it into the flour, but I don't wanna deviate from the book just yet. So in with the water, sprinkle in a teaspoon. And because I'm halving this recipe for the man and for the machine, uh, here's one eighth teaspoon. Pinch of sugar. Give that a little whisk. So I'm gonna let that dissolve. It already has. Bowl. Thank you. And I pour in the remaining cup of water. In goes one and a half tablespoons of vegetable shortening. <laughs> That's what she says. There goes the yeast mixture and a tablespoon of sugar. And I need black pepper. For this mix, around half a teaspoon. Stir with a wooden spoon to mix. Very interesting order here of how to do things, especially with the shortening, but that's what the woman says. Three cups of bread flour for this one. And adding in half a cup at a time, add it in, you stir. So you're stirring vigorously. Get that shortening in there too. Continue to add half a cup of flour. So it's around the ballpark of three cups flour. I'm looking for a very soft and sticky dough that's gonna be difficult to stir. But I feel like we're almost there already. Uh, that's soft and sticky, difficult to stir. So using the remaining flour, sprinkle it onto my surface. Don't worry, I cleaned it before we started here. The dough on there. Kneading for five to six minutes. I have some remaining flour here, but I don't want to use it because I think the dough is good as is. You can use it if the dough starts sticking to your hands, but it's not. Did I add salt? I gotta check the footage. I did not add the salt. If I get half a tablespoon of salt onto the work surface like so, 
and kind of just slop it up, problem solved. Ideally, you add the salt with everything else, but in this special circumstance, I'm the special circumstance. All right, so there's my dough ball. So I'm gonna rest that in the buttered bowl. Brush the butter onto my dough ball. Cover it up with plastic wrap and then a kitchen towel on top of that. And I need to let this rest for an hour. It needs to double in size. Today's video is sponsored by Maiden. Made, Maiden. These guys are designing high quality professional products for us, the home cooks. Partnering with factories and artisans to help bring us a curated collection of materials and shapes we need in the kitchen. So you've been hearing me toot Maiden's horn for the past year or so. It's because they're legitimately good. Like they have the stainless steel collection, various sizes of pans, like this one here, the big one, medium size, small one, then there is this, the saucier. It's like the utility pan you use when you need to get something cooked or something done. Now all of Maiden stainless steel pans are made with a premium five ply material and that's what sets them apart from the other pans out there. With the five layers, they allow superior heat retention, even heating and ease of heat control. Also, they're built for speed and comfort. The curvature of the walls for deeper searing and easier flipping and the rolled rim allows you to pour sauces without spilling. So have a look at Maiden Stainless Steel Collection as well as their other cookware and use the link in my description to save on your order. Save some money. Thank you, Maiden. Please give a warm round of applause for the Silver Fox. Silver Fox. Whoa, look at you and your big upgrade. You've got the glass bowl. I thought that would work better for the show. That way you can see what's going on on the inside. Looking good, Silver Fox. I know you don't like change. A little self-conscious about the upgrade. Tell Silver Fox it looks good. Okay, so I am using the exact same ingredients that I was, I mean, I'm doing the exact same thing. So it's the same measurements and everything like that. Here's the instant yeast. Yes, I measured it beforehand. One cup of warm water, one and a half tablespoons of vegetable shortening. Okay. Tablespoon of sugar, the black pepper. Ah, and my half a teaspoon of salt. I remembered this time. Dough hook attachment on the fox and on a low speed. Okay, so I'm gonna gradually add in the flour the same way I was doing it before, half a cup at a time. It's a total of three cups of bread flour on a low speed. Okay, so after two to three minutes on a low speed, I'm gonna turn it up to medium for five to six minutes. Knead it together. There you go. Okay, so that was awesome, but also this dough is much stickier than the other dough. I could add a tablespoon of flour at a time until this thing is smooth and elastic, but it is smooth and elastic. Look how elastic that is. Um, so she says, it still may slightly be sticky and stick to the sides in the bottom of the bowl, and that's okay. I'm gonna go with that. I mean, this is all an experiment after all, right? Good job, Silver Fox. Whoa, okay. So I'm gonna get a little flour on the hands just so I can handle this thing. And she says, yeah, it can be slightly sticky and it is. Form this into a ball. Okay, and then same deal as last time. This goes into a buttered bowl. Brush the top with melted butter. And I reached my plastic wrap quota on the other one. So I'm just gonna use this reusable stuff as well as another kitchen towel. Now this one needs to rest at room temperature for an hour also until it has doubled in bulk. So those not only doubled in size, I would say triple. Looking at the doughs, they look identical. Uh, they both have the same textures going on. And I should mention something because it's the first thing I look at is the black pepper. That was optional. And I used less than Julia was recommending. So. We'll see, uh, I don't know, is it gonna be too much? Is it gonna be too little? All right, so time for the fun part, deflate. <laughs> yeah, just deflate. Normal way is acceptable also. We're gonna wrap these up the exact same way they were, and then I gotta chill these for four hours, or if it's more convenient, overnight.
We shall see. Just preparing an egg wash. It has been four hours to maybe the next day. I'll never tell. Here's the dough. This was the dough I made by hand. Here's the dough made by machine. I only need one of these for now because she says to divide the dough in half. So I'm gonna keep this in the fridge. From my understanding, excuse me, I need a bunch of trays. So with my larger baking tray here, I'm just gonna spray it with some oil and then dust with cornmeal. Keep that off to the side. And then with these, these are where I'm gonna put my shaped bagels. Bagels, bagels. Line two baking sheets with kitchen towel and then rub flour into one of the towels. Place both sheets close to my work surface. All right, let's just, just due to the space in here, let me just do it my way, okay? So I'm gonna deflate the dough. Oh, the air that was in the bubble pop up into your face kind of has a sourdough vibe to it. And then I gotta cut this into five pieces. Uh, uh, do you know how to count? Five pieces. To form the bagel, I need to develop a gluten cloak. That will give it its structure. So draw up the dough from the bottom and stretch, stretch it and pinch at the top. Ah, I see. Keep pulling the dough up and pinching until you have a perfectly round, tightly packed ball of dough with a little top knot or pleat at the very top. Actually, you know what? While I horse around with this, I should cover the other dough with a towel. That is a tightly packed ball of dough. Turn the dough over so that the knot is against the work surface. Plunge your index finger into the center of the dough. Wiggle your finger around in the hole to stretch it. <laughs> then lift the bagel and hook it over the thumb of one hand in the index finger of the other. Circling your thumb and your finger in elongating the hole to a diameter of two to two and a half inches. Well, that's fun. At this point, the dough will look more like a piece in a ring toss game than a bagel, but it will soon boil to bagel hood. That's two and a half inches. So that goes onto the towel with the flour. Do it again. Just draw the dough from the bottom up to the top and pinch it. And I just keep repeating that until I have a tightly packed ball of dough. You really just need to develop that gluten cloak. So with my knot at the very top, I flip that upside down and I take my index finger. That goes through the dough. Hello. And then I take my thumb and with my index finger in there, I stretch it until it's two to two and a half inches in diameter. It's fairly fun and easy and there it is. Okay, so I have a stock pot full of boiling water. So let me bring my ring toss game over here. And then I have the baking sheet that doesn't have the floured towel right there. All right, in with the boiling water, a quarter cup of sugar and a teaspoon of baking soda. <laughs> Back up to a rolling boil. I'm gonna take my uh, craggy looking bagel dough here. Lower the bagels one at a time into the boiling water. Gently, and they've all come up to the surface except for one which is now coming up right now. Okay, I let them boil just like so for one and a half to two minutes. I flip them over and then I do the same thing again. Don't stick together. This is fun, making bagels. It's fun. Flip it over, flip it over, flip it over. There you go. So I lift it up and just drain as much of the excess water as I can. And then it goes onto the uh, baking tray with the clean towel and the smoothest side facing up. Smoothest side facing up. Keeping the smoothest side up, transfer the bagel to the prepared baking sheet. You wanna move fast here so that the bagels do not stick to the towel. We have no problems over here. She says to pass the egg wash through a sieve. I just realized this now, so I shall do that. 
So I gotta brush each bagel with the glaze, but do not let any of the glaze drip down on the baking sheet, or it's gonna glue these suckers down. Even brush in the little hole there. <laughs> Just let it hang out for a hot second and then you apply a second coat. So for toppings, I have three different choices for my bagels today. Poppy seed, like Julia has in her book, sesame seed, which is another option she gives, and caraway seeds. I think I'll just kind of, you know, a little variety, but I'm not gonna mix them. Just spare no expense with the poppy seeds for the first one there. I'll do another one with the poppy seeds, but maybe not as buck wild. This one with some sesame seeds. Here's the thing, I've never actually had a bagel with caraway seeds on it before, so I think I would like to give that a try. Add a bunch of ice cubes into a measuring cup. Add a quarter cup of water, so the oven is hot, 500 degrees F. This is gonna go in, and then I have to do something at the same time. Go in. And then the water and ice cubes gotta be, yeah. It's gonna create steam, steam. Ice cubes, cool. Close it, oven temperature down to 450. And I gotta leave the door. The ice cubes are gonna melt. It's gonna create some steam, right? Yeah. So turn the oven to, and bake the bagels for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, turn the oven off. Leave them for another five. Not just yet, now I gotta open the oven door, leave it for another five. Uh, these look incredible. I need to have these now cool completely on a rack. We still gotta wait. You gotta be patient, I know it is tough. Soon. So we got more bagels to make. These are the ones that were made by machine. The reason why you do chill the dough is to create more flavor and to develop a better crust for the bagels. Bagels, bagels, bagels. I'm standing here doing this thing. I wasn't really asking questions. I was like, why am I doing this water bath thing? But this is what, this is what gives you that distinct bagel exterior, you know, like that structure and the texture on the outside. And I read somewhere that this is the process where it turns a bagel into a bagel. I hope everyone's okay out there. In they go, 500 degrees F, and the ice cubes and the water on the bottom. Turn the oven down to 450. Don't open the door, we gotta capture the steam. Hey Siri, set a timer for 25 minutes. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Set a timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes starting now. Turn the oven off, five minutes. After another five minutes, open the pod door. So cooled bagels uh, can be stored in a paper bag for up to one to two days. Let's go for one right now. That's the best way to store them until you like, you know, then you can put them in a plastic bag in the freezer or what have you. Some of them have holes. Some of them, uh, the holes could have been better. Anyway, I'm just gonna throw them on a plate like so. Try to make it look nice. Or up. I don't think there's any discernible difference here between what was made with the mixer and what was made by hand. There's the same thing going on on the inside. Nice crumb. Okay, so let's throw New York bagels hat into the ring here. 
This is something that I bought from right down the street. I'm not saying these are the best New York bagels. I don't want to get into that argument. I just bought these to prove a point. The point being that Julia's bagels could hold up against them. Ah, it's like got a bit of a different crumb going on. The New York bagels, these are the ones I made. Everything else is pretty similar. Before I spread anything on the bagel, I just want to taste it. Just having an au natural, just to get, you know. All right, how about New York's? Hmm, that's very interesting. So the New York one just has like the signature taste to it and it's chewier. Mm-hmm, that's good, <laughs> it's good. My one, still very good, but different. That's right, Julia described it as a cakey open sponge. They are not heavy, stretchy, or chewy. So they are different than the New York one, which is chewier and a little more dense. This is interesting. Everyone in the comments is gonna be like, oh, it's the New York City water. I understand, I understand. They got good water. We drink good water. So you see in that photo in the book there, there's some cream cheese with some chives, good looking poppy seed bagel. While I stand here in just a pile of various seeds, it's very seedy in here right now. You know, in this little program of mine, there's a couple recipes that I would never really recommend to you to make. You know, there's some that I do and then some that I'm like, no. Well, here is one that I wholeheartedly can recommend, 100%. This has the seal of approval. It was easy to make, it was fun to make. I don't always have that much fun. This one was fun. And having one of these suckers about 30 minutes after it's come out of the oven, that's a very joyous experience. Joyous, could have thought of a better word than that. Joy, joy. A very blissful, heavenly is overplayed. It is a great, it's a good, it is an experience. Although the New York bagel has its very distinct flavor to it, as I mentioned, and it's chewy, and ah, there's just something about it. This has its own qualities, and I think there's room in the bagel space for both New York's and Julia's. That's all, this was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. Ha, ha, ha.